The calibrated scope sensor is not what it seems, as this strange new block might just be the final remnant from a lost civilization. And so, let's begin. Our story begins only a few thousand years ago, back when there were three dominant civilizations in the overworld. Those being the villagers, the illagers, and the trailers. Now, the first two you probably already know about, but that final one? Probably not. So, who were they, and why do they not exist today? Okay, to begin with, the trailers were a hyper-advanced civilization that had split away from the villagers only a few thousand years prior to this point. But, despite not being too distantly separated, they were bitter rivals, and were constantly in conflicts between one another. However, a majority of those conflicts would be won by the latter, the trailers, as they were very easily able to overpower the villagers, due to the fact that their technology was just far superior and far more advanced than that of the villagers. And so even though the villagers had an army vastly bigger than that of the trailers, it was almost impossible for them to win any conflict. And the trailers knew that, and they wanted to use this failure of the villagers to anger them, and make them self-destructive with their society, so that victories in the future would be even easier. Furthermore, to amplify this annoyance that the villagers had, the trailers made their bases out of what was at the time the rarest and hardest to obtain materials, such as terracotta and mud bricks, neither of which the villagers could ever dream of using in their homes, as they were still struggling, living in primitive wood huts in tiny villages. And so the overt opulence of their cities made many of the villagers envious and jealous of the lives that the trailers were living within the trails. So much so that many intelligent and hardworking villagers would be willing to renounce their ways as being villagers and be willing to commit ultimate loyalty to the trails. As life was just truly much better in the trails. And so, over time, millions of villagers would migrate to join the trails, leaving the villagers in a situation where they had a brain drain, as anyone smart enough to help the villagers would have already left for the trails. And so, it didn't take too long before, in the world, the trails were deemed to be the pinnacle of luxury, and what a perfect society would look like in the overworld as the trails were now a set of thousands of beautiful structures, were home to millions, and were defended greatly with advanced technology. But that all raises the question, if the trails were going through such tremendous successes, then why are they no longer in the overworld? And well, the answer to that question is one that all begins with the discovery of the calibrated skulk sensors. But to learn how the trails found them, we first need to rewind time, back just a few years. It was a dark, rainy night in the spruce forest, and the trail civilization leaders were in an urgent meeting. They were discussing how they needed more innovation within the trails, to stay ahead of the villagers and the pillagers, as without innovation, they were going to lose influence on the world, and could potentially be taken over. The problem with this is that they tried everything. Every possible combination of their technology had been tried, and every imaginable idea had been attempted. But still, over the last few years, nothing new had been created. And so, because of that, they were at a mental blockade, and had no idea what they should do. And so, this meeting went on for several hours, all during the dead of night. Yet, still, they had nothing, and things were starting to look quite grim. That was until one of them spoke up and said, We could return to that city, you know. We never took any of that blue stuff home, and so if we go back to the city and take some, that might help us discover a multitude of new things that can prevent us from falling into the hands of the villagers or the pillagers. They all went silent. 
as they all knew very well about the blue stuff from that city. But it had been agreed centuries ago by their ancestors that no one shall ever bring any of that stuff from those cities back into the trails. As there was supposedly an evil monster that lurked in the shadows that could travel through the blue and would kill everything. And so if they got those blue items back to the trails, then that monster in theory could be awoken here, and the consequences would be devastating. But at the same time, since that banning, they had grown much stronger defences, and so if things did go badly, then it would be likely that they could just use their defences to kill that beast with relative ease. And so, if they were able to cut those blocks, then the possibilities could be endless. And so it could lead to the trails potentially being able to rule the entire world, as they would have an advantage over any other civilization, unlike anything ever before. And so because they thought that there could be a chance that they could gain that much power, they very quickly decided to set up a group of explorers, and then they sent them on their way. Now, that group of explorers had never been to any of those cities, and so they had no idea what they were like, or even more importantly, where they were. But very luckily, they were all gifted a strange blue compass that pointed in the direction of the nearest city of death. And so it would be over the next few days that that group of explorers would climb massive mountains, run through dense jungles, and swim in warm ocean reefs, all whilst making sure to avoid contact with any villager or illager, as they definitely could not allow their enemies to learn what they were doing. And they kept doing this until after a few days, they reached it, as the compass directing them began spinning around in circles, and that could only mean one thing, that being that they were right on top of that city. And so it was with that that they began to dig straight down. And luckily they made it into that city without any issues. Now, they weren't eager to spend any more time than they needed down there in that grim city. And so, very quickly, they began mining any blue rock, which they quickly gave the name of Skulk to, that they could find harvesting them. And they were able to collect a few thousand of them in just under an hour. And once they had collected all that they could hold, they were about to be heading home when they spotted something. Something very strange. It was a giant glowing purple orb? They were all very intrigued, and although they knew it was probably a very dumb idea to get any closer to it, as they had to go deeper into the city, they really just needed to know what that was. And so together, they all very carefully made their way over to it, and what they saw changed them, as they had just become the first intelligent life form to have ever found a geode. And they were mesmerised by this, as they'd never seen anything this magical. And so once they had gathered all that they could possibly hold, and they couldn't gather any more items even if they wanted to, then they began to make their way home, and they all agreed that they couldn't be distracted by anything else. However, as they were walking back through that city, they got reckless, and they stopped crouching, and due to that mistake, the blue monster or as we know him by the Warden, was summoned from underneath the ground. And so all the explorers began to run as fast as they possibly could to get away from the Warden. And well, the Warden was chasing them at top speed, and things were not looking good, as those explorers were going to die, as that Warden could kill them in just one punch. But as the Warden got closer and closer, the explorers began to build up, and luckily they did this soon enough that they were out of range from the Warden's attacks. And so, they were saved. And then it was after that that they began to make their way home to the trails, which when they did just a few days later, they were met with massive celebrations, as everyone was just so excited with all these new skulk blocks, as they all believed that because of the skulk, they were going to be entering an era of grand progression and prosperity. 
And so it was that night, after much of the celebration had died out, that the experiments began. And the results from those experiments revealed that they had a very disappointing future. As they learned that the Skulk Block was really just a store of the useless experience points, which in those times didn't do anything. They also learned that the Skulk Veins were even more useless, as they had no function whatsoever. But not everything was a complete disappointment, as they did find out something about the Shrieker. As they learned that the Shrieker set out very loud sounds when anything went near to it, which was very useful to them. As they could place these Skulk Shriekers around the trails, and their terrifying sounds would scare off any incoming attackers. However, that's just what they thought would happen. In reality, after hearing the sound once, the attackers wouldn't really be scared anymore and would just continue with their attacks. And so really, in the long term, the Skulk Shriekers were useless as well. But that's where the Skulk Sensor comes in and changes everything. As they were very useful, unlike literally everything else. As the Skulk Sensor acted like wireless redstone in that it could transmit an electrical signal but it could do so through air it was great as now the trailers with the use of the skulk sensor could make far more advanced defenses that could just activate by the sound of their enemies walking too close to the trails they could also create hidden doors and that would prove to be very useful when trying to hide during an attack as they could just run into a wall and the door would open and they could hide and so to the trailers this new skulk sensor was just amazing now that being said there were a few downsides to it that being you couldn't control the activating as it just picked up any sound and treated them all the same which meant if one of their own people got too close to a trap it would activate no matter what but thankfully, that was mostly okay, as for now, everyone knew where the traps were, and so really, they just had to be careful to avoid them. And so, it didn't take too long for most of the trail defenses to be converted into Skulk Center powered contraptions that would prove to be extremely effective. But to do all of this was going to take a few weeks, and so it was during that time that they didn't want to leave all the remaining Skulk blocks just lying around in the trails. And so they decided to move all the other Skulk blocks, and the Amethyst as well, into a vacuum within one of the labs, and then to lock it up, ensuring no one could get to it. Now their plan was to just leave it in there for a few weeks, and then come back to it to continue experimenting on them once I had finished making all of those defenses with the Skulk Sensors. However, little did they know that they were going to uncover something very different from when they opened up that lab a few weeks later. As somehow one of the scientists accidentally left a few Skulk Sensors in that lab instead of taking them out. And well, because of that, every so often, as someone would walk above that lab, the sensors would activate, which as the lab was a vacuum, would attract anything towards it. And well, there was only one thing that could move around in that vacuums, as there was only one thing that was light enough, and those were the amethyst crystals. And so as they began to get pulled closer and closer to the sensors, they began to fuse with them. And well, as they were left for several weeks in that vacuum like that, that fusion began to become permanent as the Skulk began to bind itself to the Amethyst Crystals. And so, with the two merged, the calibrated Skulk Sensor was created. And so it would be a few weeks later when they opened up the vaults that all the scientists would be shocked as none of them were expecting to see this. And so they took out this strange new calibrated skulk sensor out of that lab and began to run some experiments on it as this new calibrated skulk sensor was never meant to exist and so it was from all those experiments that they were able to discover nothing that was weird it looks so different yet to all their tests it proved just the exact same answers as the ordinary skulk it shouldn't have been like that they thought 
is clearly different. And so they were getting quite annoyed as deep down they did really hope that this new calibrated skull sensor would have at least one more use. But they guess not. It must just be some sort of useless vanity. However, just as they were beginning to dismiss this calibrated skulk sensor off, they realized something. Something that would be very useful to them, and something that would make these calibrated sensors very, very popular. As they discovered that the calibrated skulk sensors, unlike the regular sensors, could differentiate between sounds. And when they discovered that, they were shocked. Now, to you and I, that might sound useless, but to the trial civilization, this was amazing. As it now meant that very quickly they were able to create a small machine that could allow the calibrated scope sensor to only output during certain conditions, thus meaning there would no longer be any accidental settings off of the traps. And so it was with this newfound discovery that over the next few months, they replaced all of the ordinary skulk sensors with these new amazing calibrated skulk sensors. And so with that, life in the trails was great, as their defenses were now stronger than ever before, meaning an attack on the trails would be even less effective, meaning the citizens were even safer. And so it was after the full success of implementing Amethyst into skulk sensors that they began to do more experiments on the Amethyst, hoping to learn more about it and create more grand pieces of technology that they could use with it. And well, they tried many, many things, and most of them would fail. But some of them would be a success, such as the discovery of tinted glass, which would lead them to the discovery of how to stain glass, which they then used all throughout the trails to decorate their elaborate buildings, making them look even more luxurious than they already were. Furthermore, they also discovered how to create a spyglass thanks to the amethyst when it fuses with some copper. And so with that discovery, they would now be able to spot an invader from miles away. And so everything was just amazing, and things were only getting better and better. However, there was one problem with everything going on that if left unresolved would be fatal for the trails. And that problem was that they were now far too reliant on the Amethyst. As all of their defenses were powered by it, all of their early warning signs used it, and much of their decorations were using it. And it wouldn't be too long until everything within the trails had hints of Amethyst. So really, too much was being used. and. The ignorance of the trails not to realise that and to change that, well, the consequences would all come clear very soon. As it was on one night when the worst thunderstorm ever hits the overworld and thunder began raining down on the overworld, that every single amethyst crystal is dislodged from their creations, as the amethyst was attracted to the electrical charge within those lightning bolts, and thus all of their defenses are deactivated, and their spy glasses are misaligned, meaning they will now get false results from them. And well, the trails didn't notice this. Well, that was until they had to face the unfortunate reality that they were being. Actually, to find out what happens next, then you'll need to watch this video.